Hi guys, how is everyone doing? Welcome back to my channel once again. In today's video, we are going to look at containerizing our .NET Core API and the database using Docker. We are also going to have a look at setting up CI and CD for our container using GitHub Actions. And we are going to look at using Dozzl to centralize our container logs. So let's get started. In my last video, I talked about separating the API and the data access layer. So in this video, I have worked further on my project and I'll be talking about how to actually containerize my application. Now, before we get started with any of this work, we need to ensure that I have my local development environment configured and I need to ensure that Docker is installed and Docker Compose is installed. So I have a separate video that talks about the Docker installation and setup on the development environment. And I will put a link down below in the description and also post a link in the information section. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, we just need to first ensure that our Docker is installed. So to confirm that, you can just go into your command line and run the command docker dash dash version just to see which version of Docker is installed. And then you can also do the same with docker compose, docker dash compose double dash version and confirm that your docker compose is installed as well. And before I proceed with showing you my docker configuration, I just wanted to discuss with you another project that I have added in my solution, which is the cars.ef.migrations. And the reason why I have added this project is that when my container gets built, I want to automatically do my database migrations for my entity framework. Now, obviously, we don't want to do that for our production environment. And similarly, even for the production environment, I wouldn't want to containerize my database. But at least for my testing environment, I want to containerize my database so that I can have multiple environments that I can use. And at the same time, I wanted to automate the entity framework migrations as well. So what I have done in, in my EF migrations project, I have a reference to my DAL layer and I'm loading the DB context, which is my car context. And I'm ensuring that I first ensure that my database is deleted and then I run the migrations. So this basically recreates the whole database from scratch. And I wanted to do that for my, at least for my testing environments to achieve a very clean state for my environment. So every time when I deploy my project, it will start from scratch with the cre creation, deletion and creation of the database. Now let's have a look at my Docker configuration. So first I'll look at my Docker file. With this Docker file, I'm trying to build my car finder API image. For the base image, I use the .NET ASP.NET 5 runtime. And I'm using the working directory as slash app exposing port 5000 for my API to run. And I'm defining a couple of environment variables. Then I am assembling the build. So I use a .NET 5 SDK as my image. And then I pass the argument as configuration as release, starting with my working directory as source. I copy all this, the solution file into the current directory. And then I copy the API project and the dial project and the migrations project. And once I do that, I run .NET restore. So what this will do is it will download all the dependencies. Then I copy everything and into the work and I go into the working directory, which is the source slash cars dot API. And then I do my .NET build. So I run .NET build, pass my configuration. This configuration gets picked up for my, from my argument and the output is provided as a folder slash app slash build. Then I need to run the .NET publish command. So from my build, I provide the argument for the configuration as release and I run the .NET publish with the configuration as the release configuration, which gets passed over here. And the output folder is provided as slash app slash publish. And now I build my final image. So from base as final, I'm setting my working directory as slash app. Then I'm copying all of my build output 
into the app folder and copying all the published output into my published folder. I'm then copying the sshd config into the ect ssh folder. I'm exposing port 80 to port 2222 and then I'm cop copying my entry point script and then ex setting execute permission on my entry point script and then I'm calling the bash command with the entry point parameter. So looking at my entry point script, what I want to achieve is I don't want to run my application until my migrations are completed. So what I do over here is I define a variable called run underscore cmd, which is the .NET command to run my project. Okay, and then I I run the migrations and until that is done, I keep on sleeping until that, that completes. And then once that is, that is done, then I execute my run, run command. So that will run my .NET cars API project only once the migrations have finished. So this covers the configuration for my Docker image and I can build my Docker image by just running the command Docker build and dot and that's where my Docker file is located. So this starts running all the steps that are documented in my Docker file. So it starts with downloading the ASP.NET base image and then yeah, it's running all these commands that are documented. Now it's downloading the SDK. And then it's configuring all the other things and it's copying the project files and running the .NET restore. And then it's running the other stuff and the, at the end it copies the entry points execute sets the execute permission and that successfully builds my container i can list all my docker images using the docker images command and as you can see here it shows all the images that it has downloaded locally including sql server asp.net and dotnet sdk and also shows the car finder images image that I have built. To make it easier for me to manage all my containers, I have also installed another tool called DocStation. A DocStation allows me to view all my containers and do all the various operations on my containers like start, stop, restart or delete the container. So at the moment, I, it doesn't show me any containers. Let me start one of the containers and then see if it appears over here or not. I'm going to run the docker run command. So docker run dash p for port and then this is the local port and then the remote port and then the container tag name. Okay, so I am actually getting an error and the error that I'm getting when starting the container is it's saying a network related or instance specific error occurred while establishing a connection to SQL server. This is because I'm running the ASP.NET web API project, but it's unable to connect to the database because my database is not running at the moment. So now that takes me to explaining what I actually do with Docker Compose. So initially with the Docker file, I was only building a single image, but Docker Compose allows you to run multi-container applications. So in my Docker Compose file, I want to run my image, which is my car finder image, which actually runs the REST API, but I also want to run my database. So my database is a SQL server image and my web is the car finder image which runs my web API. So in the SQL server image, I'm passing a couple of parameters. The 
accept end, end user license agreement i am passing as yes and the admin password i am passing as this password now this is insecure and uh, i would want to override these passwords with environment variables so now let's have a look and see how i can run my docker compose so in order to build my docker compose i would just say docker dash compose and space build and i need to run this command wherever my docker compose yaml file is present Okay, so it has built the image. So basically, all, it, all it's doing is it's building this image using the build command, which is basically taking in the Docker file that is present in the current folder. And then this image is already present. And next, I want to run the containers that are present in Docker Compose. So for that, I will do Docker dash compose and I'll give the up command. So that will bring the containers up. So now you can see it's running the database container and also it's running the web API container. And now my web API is running. So now when I go back into my doc station, I can see that my containers are running. So the web container get loaded and started. And then also the database container that also gets started. And I have made a separate video in which I discuss the installation and usage for DocStation. So do check out the link down in the bottom. And if you want to understand more about DocStation. I will cover the continuous integration and deployment using GitHub Actions and also the log aggregation and centralization using Dozzle in my next video. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope you find this video useful.